Hello and welcome to the garden. So today is one of the most important in our sewing calendar. Today I'm going to start the tomatoes. So last year I did a bit of an experiment. I took some heirloom tomato varieties and grafted them onto a modern hybrid rootstock. And I was very happy with how that went. The grafted plants, they were healthier than those we've had in our greenhouses in the last couple of years. We've been growing in the same soil in those greenhouses for quite a while now and there can be a build-up of soil-borne pathogens that affect the health of the tomato plants and by grafting them onto a hybrid vigorous rootstock those rootstocks have more resistance to certain diseases than these old varieties that I'm trying to grow. So anyway, that, that worked out great. The, the crop was fantastic. The, the size and quality of the fruit was great. I mean, the size was ridiculous. They're huge tomatoes and big trusses of them. So we were really pleased with that. And this year, we'd, we'd like to plant only grafted tomatoes uh, if I get a reasonable number of plants. So last year, the timing was a little bit off. I imagine in a few years time I will have done this enough that I can just make one sowing and be very confident in, in terms of both the timing and the success rate. So of the plants I grafted last year, I think around about 80% of them, the grafts healed properly and we had fine plants. I don't really want to rely on getting 80% of them yet. I'm not that confident. But after a while, hopefully that percentage will go up rather than down. But I think I will probably sow quite a lot more than we need just in case something is not quite right and we lose more than that this season. Um, so the timing wasn't quite right. The general advice is to sow the rootstock a week or so before the varieties and Maybe if you're grafting on a, a modern hybrid variety, that might work. But I think these older varieties, they, they tend to be a little slower to germinate and their initial growth is a little bit slower, I think, than some of the hybrids. So that timing doesn't work for me. In fact, I didn't even follow that advice I got a little bit nervous and I think I sowed the varieties only three days or so after the rootstocks but even so I think I had problems there so this year I'm going to make two sowings of the varieties. I haven't quite decided when I'm going to sow the rootstocks and the second batch of varieties. Now of course you could sow two batches of rootstocks but the seed for those is much more expensive. So I'm going to do one batch of rootstocks, two batches of the varieties, and hopefully that way I've got a range of stems to choose from when I'm trying to match them up and make a successful graft. So I'm going to sow one batch of varieties today. Maybe in a week to 10 days, I'll want to kick off the rootstocks. The second batch, I could sow at the same time or maybe a few days earlier. For example, it might be that I, I sow one lot of varieties today. In seven days time, perhaps I sow the second batch of varieties. And maybe three days after that, I could sow the rootstocks. And I think that timing might work out a little bit better for me. After, after a few years, of course, I should have more confidence in the grafting process as well as in understanding what timings work for the sort of varieties that I'm growing here. So then there's a the question of what to sow them in. So last year I started everything in small cells. It was fine, but of course I had a lot of potting on to do. Um, I think I will start the rootstocks in small pots, probably more of these seven centimeter square pots. It's not a bad size. Um, the tomatoes could grow on reasonably well in a pot this size. They stack very nicely in the propagators. 
and of course propagator space is always a precious resource at this time of year. Um, I can then skip a, a pot size and pot them into something much bigger when they're ready to go but I think in that size the rootstocks will be quite happy to go all the way through the grafting process and they should be healed by the time I need to move them on. So I think that will work well for the rootstocks. For the varieties, I'm going to use these 28 cell trays. So these are quite big cells. They must be a couple of inches and there's plenty of soil in there to keep these varieties happy. I would think up until the point where I need to graft them and quite possibly a little bit beyond that for any that I don't graft. Ideally, I wouldn't want to pot these on before grafting. So that's that's the idea to use a cell that is big enough that I can take these to the point where I'm going to graft them. As soon as they're grafted, of course, the, the plant is discarded, unless you've cut it above the seed leaves, in which case it can regrow from the leaf axil there. But the idea is that they stay in these trays right up to grafting and then either I pot on some spares or, or then I discard what's, what's left here. So anyway, I need to do quite a few plants. We're going to get 14 hopefully in each of the greenhouses and probably 16 in the polytunnel. I think we put, maybe we had two dozen plants there last year. We, we had more than 16, but 16 is plenty in there. I'm just going to firm that in just a little bit. This is light compost, not, not too much. I don't want it to slump too much when it, when I water it. That should be fine. Now I'll just give that a good drop of water. Now all I'm going to do is just make a little hole in the centre of each of those cells and I will drop one or two seeds in depends how much seed I've got of each of the varieties. So on to the varieties. So the first one I've got here is Cherokee Purple. That's a good size tomato. It's not exactly purple. It's a, it's a moody, dusky red color. I haven't grown this one for a few years, but we have grown this several times. And like most of the, or possibly all of the dark tomatoes, dark skin, dark flesh sorts, they are very tasty. They've got quite a nice rich flavour. I don't think we've found one of the darker sorts that we don't like. So I'm growing Cherokee Purple again this year. And then I've got Sun Gold. It's one of the few hybrids that we have in the garden here. And I do grow this every year for my wife who loves this little tomato. And she'll just sneak down to the greenhouse and grab a few from time to time. It's not really my cup of tea, but she loves it so always a few of those to grow and now I've got a German heirloom tomato here recent trowel we grew this for the first time last season and 
We were pretty impressed with it actually, and, and I'll be very interested to see how it does grafted because the plant that we grew last year wasn't grafted. This is, it is a cherry tomato and it forms enormous trusses of fruit. The tomatoes are a bit bigger than a normal cherry tomato and they got very good flavor for one of the smaller sorts. I always feel that the larger fruited tomatoes are in a different league in terms of flavor. But for a small tomato, this one we thought last year was very nice indeed. So we're, we're growing that one again. Ah, now I've got a sort of yellow orangey fruited sort. I've never grown this before. This is ananas, this pineapple tomato. I'm hoping this will be nice. All the descriptions of it talk about it having a decent flavor. I've been struggling for years to find uh, a yellowy orange tomato that appeals to me. Now, of course, everybody's different and I'm, I'm sure I'm sure there are lots of yellow tomatoes out there that people are enjoying, but to my taste, I've always found them a little bit bland compared to some of the others. So I haven't found one yet that I'm really happy with. So maybe this is it. I like to throw one into the mix most years and see how it does on the quest for a well-flavored yellow sort. Then I've got a palka. So I I haven't grown this one before. It was recommended to me last year and in a comment on one of the videos and I looked into it. It's a Polish heirloom cooking tomato really. It produces large, large elongated fruits. And I was thinking this year about growing San Marzano again. That's a tomato that I know is capable of producing great fruits, but I've never had great results with it here. I, I don't know why the conditions, maybe they're not quite right for it, but I was thinking about giving that another try. But when this Apalka was mentioned, I thought that sounds like a more interesting variety to try. So this is an old Polish one and I'm hoping, as long as these seeds germinate and the grafts hold, I would like to fill the greenhouse here with no, not the greenhouse, the polytunnel with the opalka. Because we make tons of tomato sauce and, and I'll make it from any tomatoes that we're growing. But of course, the those sorts that are intended for culinary purpose, the flesh is more dense, it's less seedy and um, there's a lot less water in them. So they, they do cook better. So that would be the idea for those. That's another pack of those. I'll sow that next time. Then I've got Pianolo del Vesuvio. So last year I had three smaller fruited Italian sorts, Pianolo, Corberino and Principe Borghese. They're all fairly similar in, in flavor and, and texture. There's not a lot to choose between them, but I did like the growth habit of Pianolo. And, and I don't know, that season at that time, maybe it had a slight edge in the flavor but anyway that's the one i've chosen to grow this year so i want a few of those canestrino de luca that was a great performing tomato last year um the crop was really good this is a tomato that it, it's in that dual purpose zone it, it tastes great so it's, it's fine for the salad it's also very nice cooked as well so I want plenty of those. And Belmonte, I think, if I remember rightly, this is from Calabria. This is a fantastic tomato. This is one that was at the top on flavor and indeed on size of fruit. So this is a large fruited uh, ribbed tomato. Absolutely delicious. That one is definitely on the list. That That's not on the list. I'm not growing that. And finally, I've got Pantano. This performed pretty well for us last year, especially the grafted plants. I think the ungrafted ones weren't quite so good. The fruit size wasn't quite so good. The trusses weren't quite so large. 
and that's probably to be expected. And this is this is one that is really very nice, just sliced for the salad. And as it shows in the picture there, often has a little bit of green about the shoulders. It's a little bit rustic looking. Very nice tomato though. I like that one a lot. Let me just check my list. Yep, that is the lot this year. I think fewer varieties than last year. We've got nine varieties here. I think we had more than that last year, but I'm trying to cut down slightly on the varieties and I will probably going forward have a core of favorites that I grow each season whilst still allowing me to try two or three new ones each year. Anyway, on to the sowing. Right. So I need 16 plants of opalka and, and that would mean I need to I need to graft to be really confident I'd need to graft uh, I don't know 24 28 something like that. I'm going to sow 20 of these and I'll sow those in individual cells. They probably won't all germinate but that doesn't matter at all. And then I will sow the same again in the second batch. And hopefully that will give me plenty of plants to graft. Oh, that wasn't good. I dropped two in there. Actually, there's more seed in here than there's supposed to be. Um, I will. I'll keep all of that. I will have plenty of these. I've got plenty of cells in, in, in four of these trays, so that's absolutely fine. So most of this tray will be a palka. Maybe I'll put sun gold in the rest of it. You really don't get much for your money with these hybrid seeds. This is one that might be better grafted from the second batch, but I'll sow it in this batch as well. Give me some options when I'm trying to match the stem size. Now, if I hadn't watered that, I could probably just tap this tray to close those holes over, but having watered it, it won't move. So I'm just going to top those cells up with a little bit of fresh compost. I could, of course, water from the bottom. I don't tend to. Um, I'm a little bit, I don't, I don't know, it's probably laziness more than anything else. But I do like to make sure that it is properly hydrated before I get going. That's the first tray done. So I'm going to move on to Reason Trab, and I've got plenty of seed of this one. It's an easy one to get hold of. So I'm actually going to drop two in each cell. And then uh, tomato seed is pretty reliable. So I, I would expect two to germinate from that in most cells. And I can thin to a single seedling there. This isn't fresh seed, this is from last year, so um, just hedging my bets a little bit with that. It's one of those packets with a silly amount of seed in it, so I might as well use it. And now Pianolo del Vesuvio. 
great little tomato that. Quite a nice nice growth habit. I think it's I think it's good for maybe growing quite close together. The habit is quite open and I think airflow is probably quite good around it as a consequence. Funny how the seed varies between varieties. The seeds of the Cherokee purple are really nice and large. Some of them are a lot smaller. Again, I've got plenty of them, so I'm going to sow a couple of cells with an extra one just to make sure. So that's the first batch of the tomato sown. Some of those cells have got a couple of seed in where I've got lots of seed to use up um, the rest of them have got a single seed I expect most of these to germinate anyway even even the older seed with tomatoes I don't expect to have a repeat of the problems I've had with one-year-old onion and pepper seed not with these so I hope not I'll be quite annoyed if they if these also have trouble because they really shouldn't do and they've they, they've all been kept in sealed bags so there really shouldn't be any problem with these. And hopefully we'll see signs of life within a week. They're pretty quick to get going. I was debating whether to start them off indoors or down here in the greenhouse. Temperatures are a little bit more consistent indoors, of course. But the light's much better down here. And of course, if I was doing them in individual pots, then... I can easily start them indoors and then just move them down as and when they germinate. But of course, when they're in trays, these are going to germinate at slightly different times. The hybrids were really consistent last year and and really quick too. But, but most of them were up within a day or so of each other. So those I could start indoors. But because these will germinate in dribs and drabs, they're better down here because otherwise I'm I'm left wondering whether I leave a couple to go leggy while a few more of them germinate. I'm I'm not doing that. I shall just start them down here. Right now temperatures are pretty good. Daytime temperatures are fine and these propagators will keep a very nice temperature for these to germinate at. So I don't think it's a problem starting them down here. Not not at this time of year, we're right at the end of February. So, yeah, and daylight, of course, is improving every day that passes. And these will, these will really want to be in the brightest conditions I can offer because then you get more stocky plants and those, I think, are better for grafting. So, yeah, you want, you want a reasonable stem diameter to work with. I know you can graft them when they're really very spindly little stems but that is a little bit difficult and I would rather have um, some fatter stems to play with so anyway hopefully that's what I'll get by starting them down here but anyway that is all for this video I will return probably when I sow the root stocks I probably won't bother to film the next batch of these it's going to be exactly the same again so I will come back and show you what I'm doing with the rootstocks. I haven't checked, but I'm almost certain that those are pelleted seed. They were really reliable and quick last year, so hopefully we'll have the same this year. Anyway, that is all for this video. Thanks ever so much for watching, and bye for now.